Allie Knowles and Holly Bennett Allen. And first, Allie, congratulations on a stellar performance. Thank you. Thank you. A 43 your first time here in Kentucky. What was it like to be in that big ring? Everything that this girl and Buck and everyone told you it would be? Oh, it was incredible. It was incredible. Yeah, I can I mean, I was speechless for sure. Holly is already crying. <laughs> person you might want to not watch this interview. So, Holly, Ali is one of your first students that you ever had, um, and she's here at Kentucky with you. So, just first, any words of advice you had? You've traveled the world in so many four stars, and to tell her kind of, you know, what this experience is going to be like, did you have anything, maybe tips to give her? You know, it's it's so different than any other work show to see all the people here and cameras and photos and autographs and that. But um, when you leave that box, she knows her horse better than anyone. And from air is unbelievable. And honestly, for your first uh, Rolex, I wouldn't want to be on anything but good old bird, so. <laughs> All right, well, your horse last call for me. She's called around the barn. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, she's a 13 year old uh, Mecklenburg. Uh, actually, when I started working for Holly, like two months ago, we worked for her in, back in 2007. We went on a shopping trip uh, to Buck Davis this time. <laughs> it's all, keep it all in the family. And we ran across her in the cross ties, and I, I had to have her. She has been incredible. Like, I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better partner. And um, so we've done a lot of growing up together. And a few moves, life changes. And then, like, she, and I really feel like she's always been there for me. And so we're, like, very. Uh, one as a team and so I'm very thankful to be here I'm my first four star with her and have Holly and Buck and all you know everybody that I have basically grown up with uh, you know my past coaches everybody here with me it's incredible all right well for those of you who don't know Ali ditched us on the west coast to be here in Kentucky based in Kentucky do you have any people that are from Kentucky yeah nobody no one? Okay. <laughs> no one calls Kentucky home but Allie? No. Um, well, Allie, very special to be here. Obviously, your whole family's here. Everybody's traveled out. And, and they said to you, when you go down center line, make sure that you make a great impression right after that. But I don't think that they expected maybe that you'd get two nines and a ten. Officially. Well, you know, I had this friend who called me this morning, funny enough, and she said, go up center line and flash them. smile as big as you can is yeah. awkward for the judge. They can't give you any worse than the mate. So just go for it. <laughs> yeah, so everybody told me make that make that a good impression. So uh, she felt relaxed and I so I knew I had her focused on me so I could really ride for a big canter and that really set the stage for a good test. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well Holly Jen and Juice, your longtime partner and horse that you produced and a heck of a mare. She's very spicy would probably be an appropriate word to to refer to Jim and Juice with, but tell us a little bit about her and the background you guys have, have done so much in the last few years, and, and what's it like to be back here in Kentucky competing again? Um, I got the ride on Jim and Juice. Actually, the reins were handed to me um, at Galway now. She was five years old. The girl that was riding her just decided she didn't want to ride her and gave me the ride. Um, so my first event, I did very, really well on her, and then um, as we all know, those horses, there's highs and lows. Um, I've experienced them all, and um, super excited to be back at Rolex. I haven't been here since World 2010, so it's exciting. I love it here, and um, I was a little disappointed yesterday, but um, if I do my job, she does hers tomorrow. Um, I'm excited. The course is like close to 30 seconds longer than it has been in the past, which will help me um, hopefully. <laughs> with her because um, I swear to God she's a family friend and um, I'm excited for her. 
Well, Jenny, when she finishes cross country, if you guys are standing by the, that finish line, take a look at her. She's going to be one of those horses with her ears forward. She's ready to go again almost immediately. And she's a bit of a handful even at the end, as much as she is in the beginning. So she's little. How big is Jenny? Uh, she's only 15 3, and it's deceiving because everyone thinks she's bigger than she is, at least because I'm not that tall. <laughs>
bigger farm now and I have a lot more land to work with and I think that has been helpful. We do a lot of uh, long trotting, um, like a lot of trotting, a lot of process and, um, and we have a little bit more terrain here. The traveling has been very far so I haven't worried about having to drive from here to Florida and back twice um, because she was used to that kind of traveling in California. Um, but, but the terrain here has helped um, and I, you know, I don't know if necessarily it was a move that has made her any fitter than she was before. I think it's just been a, a very long, gradual transition with her from, from the age of seven, you know, and she would look nothing like she does now. Mm, nope, like a pony, like a pony. And, uh, and so it's, it's taken a lot of work and a lot of time um, to get her to where she's at. Ginny Deuce just gets herself fit in the field. <laughs> 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 no gallops for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's, she's a little different. <laughs> um, with her, I never actually did a gallop until I went my first three star. Um, she did her one star, two stars just off the of regular work. Um, but with a four star, even though she is fit and can be crazy, you still have to make sure they do do their gallops. And where I, have, where I live, we have a hill that's like two minutes 45 seconds and she went up that four times she's done like that was her last gallop so um yeah she's she's, she's got more of a little button yeah, yeah. <laughs> enterprise button but yeah that's for sure yeah right um and then it's it's also different like once they've been to four star their, their bodies basically stay there um she gained weight through the winter which is great but literally she looks at the hill and gets skinny <laughs> kind of like me when i look at the hills and <laughs> no, um, it's just like any athlete, like once they get fit, it's so much easier to hold your fitness. So. And speaking of athletes, Holly is a huge sports fan. Yes. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> die hard sports fan next to me. Just my little some of the things maybe that you've taken from watching other sports and mentally or about the game or watching the tape or anything like that that you've kind of been able to relate to eventing? Yeah, it's kind of funny. I was watching the news this morning and they're talking about LeBron James because NBA playoffs are going on right now. And um, he said that he's turned off his Facebook, all his Twitter accounts, um, isn't watching any news. You know, he's so focused on his game and he had like a career high last night. So, you know, like at our level, I mean, some people are here just to do a four star, some people are here to win. Um, you know, for me, it's this is my job. And you have to stay focused on what you want to do. And um, for me, I, I love music too, so I always like to have music on. But then when it's my time, like tomorrow, I'll go very quiet. Um, and I don't like lots of people around. There's a few people I like to have around, but you know, our story. <laughs> Um, no, it's, it's, it's serious, and, you know, we've all had big falls and stuff that happened, and, you know, for example, after my fall at London, um, the next big three day I did was go in the fall, and, you know, because I'm hurting your nerves, and of course I'm nervous, <laughs> you know, like, the minute you say you're hurt, I think that's when you're in trouble, but, um, it's a mental game, and lots of people have said, that, you know, riding is, like, 5% talent and 95% mental, and you've taught yourself something and out of something and um, you know you watch any upper level athlete think what they're doing and they got a look on their face and their focus on what they want to do so everyone has a different way of dealing with um, stress and nerves and all that and I have mine I go for quiet but I'm not mad I just <laughs> focus on um, what I would have done. About how long before you ride to you say that you do that kind of dessert do you walk through Lynn Szymanski was here a couple days ago and Lynn said that she walks through the course forward and backward in her head and I'm not really sure she does the jumps backwards so I don't know if I'd recommend that for all riders but that's what Lynn does um, and she takes a nap so I think it's interesting how everyone is is very very different like there's no way I can sleep before cross country I think it's different also I think it's different than like your ride times because like um, one year I rode Hank at number 82 like end of the day and you know, you go and watch riders, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, you gotta keep riding this way, and you start to change your plans. So, um, I had to leave, I couldn't watch anymore, because I wanted, I didn't want to, you know, change my plans. So, I think it's different, like tomorrow I ride early, so I'm gonna get on the ride up to Jenny in the morning. Try to, try to relax for a little. <laughs> and then, um, and I'll put her away, and then literally, but that's it, game mode on.
whereas she's, she'll be riding. I ride in the afternoon, and I'll ride for, I'll, I'll ride once in the I'll ride once in the morning as well, but I don't ride until after the lunch break. So I have picked a, a select few that I want to watch, but I will not be out there for too long watching and changing the same thing. You start changing plans and, oh, maybe I should do this or maybe I and, should do that. And specific things you do maybe to mentally prepare, just at any horse show. I mean, here too, but in general. I, I ride it how I want it to go in my head, and, um, and I really like sort of make friends with the fence like like if I'm you know if I'm nervous about a certain fence I'll look at it and look at it until it starts looking smaller you know and and so and that's what I do I you know I mean I don't know exactly how I'm gonna feel tomorrow I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty nervous you know and how much sleep I'm gonna get tonight who knows but I know I'm gonna uh, wake up in the morning with a stomach ache and it's going to last until about 2 30 until I leave that Starbucks and um, and I just I want to ride I want to watch the rides that um, I want to emulate and watch the horses that are also similar to my horse and um, and the people that I know are gonna give a ride similar to how I might ride something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. And uh, you know, and then I'll go out and watch Buck and Holly, and uh, and then probably chill out in silence. Same thing. I get very quiet, and um, you know, and I'm stabled next to Holly, which is nice. Like it is, it's very much a family right there in those couple stalls that we all know each other very well, and there's no expectation um, to be a certain way or to <laughs> yes, <laughs> double clear only. <laughs> so. Um, so I'll yeah I, I can unma imagine taking a nap as well. I get sleepy when I'm nervous. <laughs> well, speaking of that family, there's a very close knit group of people back in the barns, and somebody was saying what makes this year so special, too, is that it's a smaller, more intimate group of riders this year, and a lot of you guys are friends, you know each other really well, so it's almost like being here with all your buddies and you're cheering each other on, and um, now we're gonna make them cry as a precursor but Jenny Brannigan um, this morning for those of you who didn't hear yesterday very unfortunately her horse Kimbalda got away from her or got away from somebody when he was being lunged and he slipped and fell um, on the concrete and so he is not competing she withdrew him this morning um, and we won't be seeing Jenny this year but Jenny is somebody in this family who has leaned on the family a lot and the family's leaned on her and Holly was talking about the highs and lows there's been a lot of highs and lows for Jenny um, and for these girls it's just part of the game but what makes eventing so unique is that you have that friend support and when Allie came out of the ring today Jenny was standing right there and she was cheering her on and um, they're friends first so competitors second but you're still cheering on on your buddies yeah. and um T just tell us a little bit about kind of what you said to Jenny and, and kind of your thoughts on what she's going through too. You know, I mean, we, we all have to work so hard to have the opportunity to be here talking even once. Um, and so, you know, I mean, this is such a huge deal for me. And so I know this is such a huge deal for her. And, uh, right before I got on, you know, I got, I got the word that she was going to withdraw and, you know, and I just gave her such a big hug and like, like it physically hurts knowing that she got this far and and it's within her grasp and it just slipped away and you know I mean it's just bad luck it's just it's just bad luck and it's a bummer and uh, and so I told her before I went in that I would ride it for her and absolutely I went around that ring and I thought <laughs> I'm doing this for you and it was it was heartbreaking coming out and you know just seeing her and I'm so thankful that she is who she is and that she's there and supporting me through such a hard time and I know 100% she wants my success and you know and when she gets back out here which is going to be no time at all I, I will have her back 100% Jenny also from California so a close California group and she was one of Holly's other up and coming students at the same time as Allie so lots of time spent together lots of trips in the truck <laughs> lots, lots of fun to be had um, these three and, and Holly for you just with everything that kind of Jenny's been through in the last few years and she always seems to come up on come out on top but she's such a cheerleader for everybody else in the sport and you know the three of you and Buck and everyone it's whatever you need kind of and um, just talk a little bit about that relationship um, Jenny is a class act like she's 
I mean, the stuff she's gone through and she still walks around with a smile on her face, very positive outlook on things. Um, she's a person that all you young kids should be looking up to. She's only, what, 25? Yeah. And un unbelievable. She's matured into this she's a role model and at 25 years old she's one of the best riders i think in the states she has one of the nicest horses in the world and you know like ali said it was just i mean bad luck like she had a shot i think she should have i i think predicted her to probably go top three here um and it's just it's a it's a bummer it's our sport but you'll never ever ever see her talking bad about anyone um talking down like today you know she's like it just wasn't meant to be and you know they're going to take care of the horse and you'll see her competing this summer and you know she's one of the ones that counters down the center line with that big smile on her <laughs> face <laughs> like she i remember there's a picture from the fork pouring pouring rain there's jenny <laughs> just like smiling away um no she's uh She's, like I said, she's turned into an amazing young woman. Well, she'll be there cheering you on tomorrow, obviously, mm -hmm. both of you. And, and Buck Davidson, been really pivotal person in your career, I know, Holly. But um, I was had him on the couch yesterday here, and I was chatting with him and said, um, you coach so many of these big-time riders. Like, you're the coach of many Olympic riders and, and big names in the game. And, and how is that for you? And, you know, are they your peers? Are they your students? You know, what is that like? And, and he obviously had great things to say about you both. And um, but to have him kind of out here too and competing, how does it help to have your coach competing alongside you for both of you? Um, I think of him as my coach, but he's also like honestly one of my best friends. And especially with this horse, Jin Juice, so many people basically kind of gave up on her through her career because. Like I said, we've had some real highs and real lows, but he's been one of the ones that's um, been behind me like 100% the whole time. And he's always someone that I can I can call. He lives in Florida, I live in California. I can call and ask him a question about anything and it doesn't matter what time of day it is. He has, always has my back, but you know, I'm excited for him. He has three horses here, yeah. you know? Like, um, talk about a hard worker. He um, he can get- And on. all his students. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, uh, he's, he's amazing and he's another one that if you look back at his career like where he started galloping ponies and steeplechase riding till now like I mean I worked for his dad and to see what he had to ride and like that's why he, he would have to get on everything and that's why he's so good like the three horses he have has here are three completely different rides and um, he's he's amazing and so to have like your best friend as your coach and another best friend here and another one over there uh, <laughs> yay I'm early <laughs> um, you know it's a it's a it's a it's a big special special weekend so okay so that brings me to my next point Marilee come come on over here for a second <laughs> come on come sit <laughs> uh oh she's had, she's so had a bloody these Mary. <laughs> three for for the audience these three girls you can sit right here are very good friends so they just Decided, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell. <laughs> they decided to get a very special tattoo. And no, I'm gonna take it. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm gonna let them explain. I'm gonna let Marilee explain to you this tattoo <laughs> that all three of these girls have for their friendship. <laughs> Well, <laughs> they are, are, my name, well, it's Holly, Allie, and I'm Mary Lee, so it spells ham, the first letter. <laughs> and so a friend of ours kind of suggested, you know, maybe get a tattoo of a ham. No, no, no. It, no. <laughs> it started, in my mind, this is how it went. It was a New Year's. Yeah, it was, it was New Year's Eve, so keep that in mind. We were sober. We Don't were sober. We were sober. I wasn't. I was. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take it off. Oh, okay. Toes okay. So, if, but before she shows this, in my mind, I'm thinking we're going to get like H A M spelt, kind of like embroidered, initialed, yeah. initialed, really pretty. Like, oh, let's just get it on our wrist. Oh no, no. The tattoo artist starts drawing a ham. I'm like a ham. <laughs> Okay, and now keep in mind, I have size five feet, okay? <laughs> These guys don't, so my ham takes up my whole foot. Why don't you show it? <laughs> this is horrible. Oh yeah, we full on, we have hams on our feet. Yep. They're all the same. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up with hams on our feet. Yep. And it is what it is. Yeah. So 
This is the M though in the ham. You had to meet her or it would <laughs> all make sense. <laughs> so we're going to take, I have a couple more questions and then we're going to take questions from the audience. But one of the things that somebody had tweeted in on social media was how do you kind of figure out in the course there are sections that are fast, slow, all different paces. So as far as your minute markers go and stuff like that, when you have a game plan, do you also figure in that certain times are going to be quicker, certain aren't, and, and plan accordingly when your watch goes off to where you're going to be in those in those segments? And then for people maybe who don't know about minute markers, take them. one of you take them through that for me. Um, well, at a four star, our speed is 570 meters per minute. So every 570 meters, our watch goes off. And I've found when I've ridden here, at about the seven minute mark, I've been down close to 15 seconds and still been able to make it up and make time. The difference with this course that Derek's done is there's a, a bunch of galloping stretches. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have walked at all or not, but there's a quite a big climb up to the hollow at the back. And usually you're going to be down on your time there. But then when you go down the, through the hollow, you get a run back up. And with my mare, it's like second win. <laughs> and then at the end of the course, um, after the Normandy Bank, you run down to the water. And it's funny because yesterday we were on our course walk. And I said to Buck, I'm like, oh, this is one that I might be a little worried about. It's a huge brush into water. And he's like, well with her mare, she's going to have to keep kicking down to it and I'm going to be woeing down to it because I know Ginny is going to be running off with me um, down at the end of the course. So you can be down on your minutes here and still make up the time. But if you guys want to watch, watch Andrew Nicholson ride. He, he will make time. I don't know how he does it. He is a magician out there. Um, and you'll see him looking down at his watch. But he... Um, he is unbelievable to see. You'll see him like let his horse kind of gallop up the hill. He's not going to be pushing him. And then all of a sudden, he's back on his mid-mark. He is unbelievable to watch. And is there part of the course, Ali, that you're most excited about, most nervous about, or just are looking yeah, most forward line. to? <laughs> that finish line. <laughs> no, I'm going to take fence by fence. Absolutely. Like, I can't say how she's going to be. I've never done this. So I don't, you know, I think it's going to be a different ball game out there. Um, and so, you know, I'm just going to take one jump at a time and move as quickly as I can um, and and see, you see where we're at. I do think she'll be, um, you know, tired after or, you know, feel like sort of lagging after the hollow. And I've been fair warned about that. And and she does have a second wind and she's not the fastest, but she can go for a long time. And so always steady. Like, I mean, she'll just and she has a huge stride. And so I'm just going to do. Um, do my best out there and communicate with her and I know she'll tell me when we can go faster and when we need to take a take a slower minute and give it my best <laughs> and then besides the ham obviously do you guys have any things like any lucky things you do or just anything that you always do before cross country or show jumping or things you stick to no matter kind of what show you're at I set up the same way you know like I mean I would never put my armband on my right arm you know, like everything has to be sort of the feel the same. And my weirdest probably thing is that my boots need to feel right. Like if my boots don't feel right, the stickiness, if it's too sticky, can't handle it. If it's not <laughs> sticky enough, you know, so I have like a very specific setup about how my saddles are conditioned and my boots are conditioned to that. But that's, you know, I don't have any real superstitious things, I don't think. Do you? I just, I don't wear white socks. No white socks. No white know, socks. I mean, <laughs> normal. So. Ever or just when you're riding? Uh, just when I'm riding. I have the JoJo socks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not very superstitious, I guess. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, we're going to take questions from the audience now. So just go ahead and kind of raise your hand and I'll pick, pick questions. No questions. These girls don't bite, I promise. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Oh, that's Ali's question, right? <laughs> what, would you, uh, what would you recommend? Or is, is, is there one piece of advice that you found really helpful? So, so the question is, if you were an owner of a 15 three-hand fiery little mare, um, another owner of it, what piece of advice would you give? And, and um, is there something that's kind of helped more than others? Um, patience. <laughs> like, I swear to God, if I ever have children, I will probably be the best mother because there are days when I've ridden her and I'm like, all I'm asking you to do is canter. 
Like, why are we bouncing up and down? Um, when it's honestly a day like that, um, I get off and I'll put her away and then I'll get back on her. Um, she's not one, like I said, I can't make her tired. Like, I can't ride her for an hour and a half. Like, she just gets worse and worse and worse. She's better to ride for 20 minutes, put her away, get back on, ride for 20 minutes, put her away. And it's a patience thing. You know, like, if your horse is a good horse, and it'll be worth it <laughs> in the long run. But trust me, there are days, and I'm just, like, literally, I'll look up and look at the sun and be like, oh, it's a great day outside. Like, because I want to kill you right now, you know. But you can't. Like you can't. Yeah, you. You. There's no. There's no point in reacting when they're like that. So hopefully that helps. Jenny's passionate and all she does. One day I called Holly and I said, "What are you doing?" And she said, "I'm in the field." So what are you doing? I'm trying to catch Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> I've been out here for 45 minutes. Yeah. I'll call you later. We're galloping today. Yeah. <laughs> and she, I call her back. I said, "Did you catch Jenny?" Yeah took a really long time but I caught her yeah. did you gallop her yeah and she still wasn't tired I know she's so bad like I'll go out there and she'll literally lunge herself around me just on a nice beautiful 20 meter circle just cruising just cruising I mean Allie's experienced it Allie's had to catch her before and then when it's when she decides it's enough then she just stops and looks and's like hey <laughs> walks right up to you I'm like I don't understand <laughs> okay <laughs> next question Yep. Yes, Mr. Olson. <laughs> Hello, Holly. Yes. Can you tell us about the importance of segmenting the uh, different phases of the three-day event? Say, you go into dressage and things turn out more perfectly than you ever like, thought Like possible. Allie? <laughs> or things didn't quite go the way you planned. Like how, mine. <laughs> how important it is to think about the next phase and forget about the last phase. The question was that, I don't know if I can say this whole thing again, the importance of segmenting the different phases in eventing. So if you had a great day on day one, putting that kind of behind you either way, whether it was great or not, and being able to move on in the next phase kind of with a clear mind and, and go forward. Um, I remember my when I rode Ginny here in 2010, her first Rolex. Um, I was a little I got a 53 in the dressage, and I was a little disappointed with that. And Buck's like, "Don't be disappointed." He's like, "If you can finish on that, he's like, you'll go top 10." Sure enough, BDJ was right. Um, I finished on that and ended up ninth. So obviously, I was very disappointed with my ride yesterday because I know I can ride better than that. My horse can be better than that, and I had have a few moments after you know and, um, but today's a different day and tomorrow is even a bigger day and I can't let what happened yesterday affect what's going to be happening tomorrow um, I think it's really really important to break up each day and focus on what I have to do like if I go out and do my job Saturday and Sunday my job's to finish now on my dressage score so if I do that I hopefully will move up <laughs> <laughs> leaderboard <laughs> so we'll try <laughs> all right next question yes so have we The, you, the question was, how do you prepare yourself for the weather? <laughs> you hit a bit of Britain for some really big studs. <laughs> like, honest to God, um, the biggest studs I've ever bought. Like, there'll be big ones going in. Um, I th again, it's going to be a little different because I think the rain's going to start in the afternoon. And yes, we have been watching <laughs> the weather. I think the morning, I think it's going to be two different two different shows, basically, tomorrow. The, I think the morning's going to be riding a little different than um, the afternoon, than, you know, rides. But... You know, as riders, it doesn't matter. You got to do it with whatever, you know. But big studs, big studs. and lots of sticky spray. <laughs> yeah, she she knows what it's like. I'm from California, where it's sunny and warm. Like this right now is like a winter day. I'm like shivering over here. Um, and it we I don't gallop on grass, so that is. I mean, it actually is a bit different. Her horses are used to galloping on grass. Um, I galloped mine yesterday on the grass, so hopefully she's good. <laughs> no, but she's used to it. Um, but big studs. Yeah. Next question. Yes. Uh, what part of your like riding career did you decide that you wanted to ride more like that you wanted to um, yeah, keep on doing it? It's a good question. Um, what part of your riding career did you decide that you wanted to ride for life or or be a professional? 
well, when I was in grade two, I wrote in my grade two yearbook that I wanted to ride in the Olympics, marry a black man, and have twins. So, so. come on over. <laughs> This is Holly's husband. <laughs> so, I married a black man. Uh, hey, I've been to the Olympics and not sure what might be happening next year. So, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. Um, but, you know, I did Young Riders in 1998 and someone told me that I would never make anything of myself in my riding. And I, I'm a Taurus. I have a little bit of a you know, fight in me. <laughs> it was shocking. <laughs> and honestly, I wasn't that good. I didn't go intermediate till I was 21. But because that person told me that I couldn't do it, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I will prove you wrong. Like if someone told me, hey, you're not gonna be a doctor, I would probably be a surgeon right now. You know, but um, it was then that I was going to college and I used, had this amazing horse Livingston and I made the choice to continue on with my riding and um, I, I'm honestly very, very lucky. Things fell into place for me. It, it was, honestly wasn't my first thing to make my life out of. It's always something I'd love to do, but um, it, probably 1998 for me was my, you probably weren't even born yet, but <laughs> um, uh, that, was, that was it for me. And then things just fell into place and somehow I ended up in California and I get to do what I love every, every, every day, so. I, I have a little. I have. I was a little bit different than that. I actually was not a huge fan of riding as a child, and my sister did it, and uh, I wanted to be cool like my sister. And Allie's sister with. was crying in the first <laughs> ones. If you if you were in the stadium today and you heard the "I love you" when that she would finished, be my that was her yes. sister. Yeah, and so we grew up in Pony Club, and I really wasn't much of a fan. I was terrified. I wouldn't canter. I wouldn't jump. None of that. Mm -mm. And um, and. I just wanted to be friends with my sister's friends so I couldn't quit because they would think I was a loser. So I stuck with it. And then sure enough, my sister quit riding to go to college. And um, and I had two wonderful coaches as um, uh, a child and a, a teenager. And I saw, I saw that. Oak Creek Training Stable sweatshirt out there a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. I grew up, I grew up uh, in California, in Northern California, and started with Carmela Richards, and and then uh, for ten years I rode with Jackie McRae and uh, both wonderful coaches, um, and I stuck with it. Now I wasn't sure that I wanted to necessarily be a professional though. I loved it, and I rode my one or two horses um, through high school, and then I went to college and took my horses. But I, again, I hadn't gone intermediate and uh, you know and I just did the California shows and I don't know I like I loved watching Rolex but I wasn't necessarily that wasn't necessarily my end goal and it just worked out that I met Holly uh, through Pony Club actually and um, I spur of the moment moved down there <laughs> on New Year's yep. and uh, and then I found last call and that, I mean, that was a hugely pivotal moment as far as going from an amateur to a professional. And, and I really never looked back since then. And, um, and I, I've, I've just kept getting deeper into it, sort of making a split decision change to move to Kentucky. Um, I make quick decisions. And just a year and a half ago, moved on over to uh, Paris, so about 30 minutes from here. And, um, and now I have an even larger farm and more horses and... No turning back now. No, I love it. <laughs> Bill? <laughs> uh, both of you have been working students uh, yes. in your past. Can you explain to some of the writers out here that I know are going to be working students how important that is to the development of your, you as a writer from where you were to being a four-star writer? Unavoidable. So the question, the question was how important is it in the development of your riding from being in, where you are in the beginning to being a four-star rider to be a working student? I, I think you have to. Like, I don't think there's another good way around it, you know? And, I mean, you learn th more things that you don't even realize you're learning just by watching someone clean a stall or how they wrap a horse or how they bathe or, I mean, it's just unbelievable looking back now at all the things that I learned working for Holly and then working for Buck and and then I went out on my own and uh, 
I still call on both of them. Hey, what, what do you think I should do on this one? And uh, I'm just so much growing up and being a working student. And the days that you think are so hard, they get harder. You know, I mean, there's harder ones and longer ones. And you think you're tired? You'll be more tired than that. And uh, I think that that is sort of what can make you into that. It gives you that toughness to keep going. Um, so it's been it's been interesting being a working student and, and now having working students, seeing both sides of that spectrum. Um, I was a working student for Bruce Davidson, and that was the hardest two years of my life. Um, in that two years, I had one day off, and our day started from 7 in the morning, and we probably finished at 8 at night. Uh, 46 horses got done a day. Every pair of boots got scrubbed. Every saddle pad got washed. Every piece of tack got cleaned every day. I didn't clean my tack every day. I'd clean it before a pony club rally and shows until I was a working student. I was like, you clean tack every day? You gotta be kidding me. Um, you know, the horses get groomed every day. Um, like after bath, towel drying legs, like the stuff. And I'd never um, broke two year olds before I'd learned how to break babies, I got a jump eagle lion, I got all these unbelievable opportunities, but at the same time, I have never worked so hard in my entire life. Um, I'm not a big person, and I was probably 30 pounds lighter than I am right now, because we didn't even have time to eat during the day, like, literally worked all day long, and now I've had working students, and I said to myself, I would never, never treat them how or just make them I should rephrase that I will never make them work like that because I thought that was a little bit rough um, but I think you guys learned and oh, and I don't think I don't I don't think I think had lunch. yeah <laughs> you know um, not always at box though not always yeah but box a box I mean there's just so much stuff going on but the amount of things you learn like Bruce Davidson's a legend like that statue in front of the stadium I jumped that horse like who gets to say that you know and I got to break babies one of them ran in the Kentucky Derby like it's you know opportunities like that you know and talking about cleaning stalls I got screamed at I didn't know how to clean a straw stall properly with banks and you know it's just there is a proper way <laughs> um, it's just the amount of stuff you learn from these people and there's times where you just have to go yep keep your mouth shut and they can be screaming at you and but at the end of the day they know a heck of a lot more <laughs> than you do and um i think it's a huge part of anyone's career coming up like you know any of these riders here have guaranteed have been a working student somewhere you i guarantee buck has been screamed at by his father i you know like <laughs> i i can actually i can't guarantee that <laughs> you know but every single mary king like go read her book read her book you know like it's not hasn't been all peaches and cream for her like she's worked her butt off like every single person and going into that ring has shoveled poop they've cleaned tack they've been yelled at and it's just part of the process any more questions yes what are your ratings what are your ratings in pony club <laughs> i'm a graduate a <laughs> I got my A almost 10 years ago. <laughs> You're old. Whoa. You might have to get a redo Whoa. on that. Do they expire? I don't think so. I don't think, I'll take it on though. Okay. I'll take that challenge. <laughs> um, I'm a B. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a B. Um, yeah, no, and then I got too old because I joined Pony Club late. Like, this is why I'm so excited about doing the Pony Club game, games because when I, I joined Pony Club at 17, so I wasn't able to do Pony Club games, so I ran out of time. Because like I said, I um, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't ride up for levels till I was 21. So I'm old. I'm the old one here. <laughs> Any more? No more questions. Okay, we're gonna let these girls go off because I know you guys have plenty to do. But thank you so much for joining us here in the interview lounge. And um, for all of you guys out there, there's some more interview lounge 
um, interviews happening right here on the couch later today throughout the day. We're going to actually be chatting with Andrew Nicholson later this Silver afternoon. Fox. Silver Fox. And um, we'll be chatting with Will Fadre this afternoon. So after that. So come on by or you can also tweet your questions in. For those of you at home, you can you can go to the Rolex Kentucky Twitter and tweet in at hashtag RK3DE interview. And we'll try to get those questions answered here by some of your favorite riders.